Hey what's up guys, it's Slime103 here bringing you the latest in my hammer tutorial series. Today we're going to be going over part 2, functional brushes. Uh, if you're wondering how my vacation was, I am officially back and uh, it was very nice. Got to spend some time with the fam, went swimming in the Atlantic and uh, toured some colleges, but now we're back. And we're back in our tutorial map. This was what we completed in the last iteration. Uh, very basic, we went over arches and you know cutting different brushes and all that. So using those skills that I taught you, and if you didn't see the first tutorial, please go watch that. But using those skills, I have gone ahead and actually I already have it open, created this. Um, this map area and basically all I've done is added the ceiling um, I've already prepared uh, a lot of brushes for what we're we'll going over today um, but I've, as you can see I've had, uh, I've had a couple of keypads um, a couple of brushes but the main thing is the ceilings the windows and just using all the same cutting techniques that we went over last time just to make it a little bit nicer and obviously add the covering which we didn't have time for it last time because I'm sure you didn't really want to see that but let's go ahead and get into the functional brushes so the first thing that we're going to be doing is I have a little list here of all the things that we're going to be going over doors windows and letters are first up uh, if you're wondering why some of the stuff is already um, sort of gone into I did film this tutorial once and then realized I wasn't recording, so that was fun. But anyways, when you double click on a brush, it'll come up with this automatically. But the way to make it a functional brush, or I don't know if it's technically an entity or not, you do Control T, um, since this is already a funk detail, I'm gonna go ahead and press no, and that'll create a new one. And by default, it makes it a funk detail, and then you can go ahead and change this. So as you can see, there's a lot of different things you can change it to. Um, Funk area, portal, breakable, bomb target, button, buy zone, conveyor, gun target, so all these different things. Funk precipitation if you wanted to add rain. I don't know, we might do that. Funk hurt, trigger teleport, um, walls, tank trains. We're not going to be going over tank trains today, but we might go over that in a later tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and make this actually a door rotating just so I can show you um, that you need to move the axis. So for a door rotating you're going to have this little, I don't know, center of the brush. But basically this is just going to be the axis point for which the door will rotate around. So just move that according to how you want the door to rotate, but pretty much it has the same settings as a regular door besides that. So a regular door is just going to slide in whatever direction you tell it to. So if we can scroll down here to move direction, by default it moves into the right. Um, and you can check the direction by looking at the top down view. So we're going to go ahead and want to change it to 270 so that it will open down. And if you want to change it um, so that it opens up or down in front view side view then you can go ahead and click this down drop down which should do up or down um, so by default it will do a delay reset before closing so if you toggle it or if you open it it'll automatically reset to its starting position after the delay that you set so for hide and seek um, if you want to make it kind of ambiguous where the hider went if you say went through a door and the seeker was following him but not too close by you want the door to quickly change so he doesn't know where the hider went you can do like one second or two seconds and if you want it to completely say you can do negative one second so for this door we're just going to go ahead and do two seconds so there's plenty of time to walk through um, there's a bunch of other things you can do locked and unlocked sounds if you want to say have it start locked or something and then if you want to go ahead over to the flags section we have door silent, if you want it to be silent door, starts locked, obviously, touch opens, if you want to, then to walk into it to open it. 
Most of the time you're gonna want use opens though. And if you want it toggleable, you can add that as well. Non-solid and passable, pretty self-explanatory. NPCs can't use if you don't want NPCs to use it. And a lot of these you don't need at all. Speed, if you wanna make the door open really slow or really fast. So if you want it to be the seeker spawn door, and you want to open immediately on the level start, but have it open really slow. I do find that a little bit annoying, but if you want to do that, go right ahead. That is a very easy way to do that. Blocking damage. Um, spawn position, if you want it to already spawn open or closed, you can go ahead and do that um, as well. And that is pretty useful. And as you can see, there is a starts open over here in the flags, but obsolete. And a lot of the stuff in Hammer is actually obsolete, but it's just left there. Um, just don't use it. So that is how you make a door. Very simple. Let's go over here and make a brush. So what a funk brush is, is essentially it is a passable wall. So it's going to be those phase wall secrets. Um, ignore player use. Not really flags you need to work any flags you need to worry about. Um, you can name it um, if you want it uh, to be tied to say the door or something. Uh, I mean you can parent it to the door if the door was named and you can set hierarchies like that. So um, pretty useful because by standard um, like you can't just make a wall move so you can make it a funk brush and then tie it to a door and then you can make either the, like a whole room move with it or just the wall or whatever just to like activate the secret whatever you want but by default it'll be solidity toggle you want to make this never solid if it's a wall that you can phase through or maybe you want it always solid if it's just being attached to a moving object or something and then toggle is obviously if you want it to be disabled or enabled if you wanted a button to make this passable and then non-passable can make a button set to enable or disable. So let's go over here to Windows. Um, as you can see, I already made this one right here. But in order to make a window, let's go ahead and grab a glass texture. I'm not going to be going over texturing right now, but just know that you click this button to bring out the face edit sheet, and uh, we're going to go ahead and click Browse. Go to type in the desired texture you want. Um, there's already plenty of presets. Right click to apply the texture, fit to just fit it to the area, um, and that's all you really need to know right now. And I'll go ahead and talk more about textures in a later tutorial. So for now if we open this, let's make it a funk breakable. You can name it, apply, um, parent it to something once again if it's on a moving platform or object. You can set a damage filter, which is an entity that I'll go over later if you want only certain objects to damage it once we go over entities. Strength is the amount of health that this breakable object has. So for glass, it's pretty weak. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to 10. Obviously set the material type. You can, yeah, it has a bunch of presets. Um, I don't know if you can add custom. I don't think you can. But just choose from one of these. Obviously we want glass and then there's a bunch of other options if you want it to be a wall that's breakable and you can adjust the health accordingly. And then minimum damage to hurt if you say wanted um, only something very powerful to be able to even do damage to it to break it. Like an op or something you could set it to like 300. Uh, I don't actually know how much damage the op does at its maximum. I think I thought it was like 400 or something, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, but minimum damage to hurt, so you could set that higher. Only break on trigger if you want it to only break on trigger, break on touch, break on pressure, immediately break on physics. Pretty self-explanatory stuff. Jibs direction. Probably random, um, if you want like relative attack or use precise, this jibs are, or maybe it's gibs, are the little bits that like break apart when it gets broken. Um, 
all this other stuff you pretty much don't need to worry about. Okay, dokie. So let's add our sky door right here. So I've already made this because we've already gone over doors. Um, flags, I don't want it to be activated by anything but the button. Um, so we don't have to worry about any of that. And pretty much this is already set and it's got the right move direction by default. So let's go ahead and trigger it with the button. So as you can see, this is a funk button. I don't know, I think this is the only way you could do this. You can go ahead and create set a sound here. I didn't set a sound for the door, but I did set a sound for the button. Um, and there's a bunch of presets. And then you can add custom sounds for sure. And I've done that before. So for this, I just have simple key card sound. <coughs> Ugh. My voice is a little dry from recording the first time. But um, you can name it and parent it like last time if it's moving. I'm going to actually go get some water. All right, I got some water, and uh, that is much better. So we have delay before reset for this. Um, basically, the time in between interactions. So if you um, enable this one time by pressing E or however you want to activate it, you have to wait three seconds before it can be reactivated. Speed, by default, the button actually moves and you can set the direction. Um, health, obsolete, don't have to worry about that. Um, that's pretty much all there is. So over here in flags, I have it on don't move. You can add toggle, you can add use activates, you can have damage activates, touch activates. Um, whatever you really want and it's pretty much all you need so I have it on use activates obviously so you press E on it and don't move you can add sparks you can even lock your buttons if you wanna just have everything locked and it's like a maze of unlocking things um, you can do that as well you can add sparks um, you don't really need to worry about that but this is the most important thing, the Outputs tab. So under the Outputs tab, um, I already have this all set up, but let's go ahead and take a scroll through each one of these. So if you want it to be damage activated, you can do on damage, um, on use lock, um, obviously on use lock. It's very, very simple. On in and on out, I don't really use much. Um, on user is for like, um, more specific I, I haven't really used that too much but I'm I'm currently looking into using that on my latest map f for depending on exactly who presses the button it will activate for um, it gets pretty specific but really all you need on press and on damage is what you will use the most so under here oh for target entities, you obviously want to select whatever it is that you have. I named this Sky Door. So you just go ahead and put this as the target entity. And an easy way to actually find the entity is to just use the eyedropper tool. And that way you don't have to type anything in. But I just personally find it easier to type it in. Um, so under here, you can do add output from the button, clear parent, close, open, disable shadow, um, kill, kill hierarchy, lock, open, toggle, unlock. Unlock is very useful, but for a door, most of the time we want either open or close. So we're going to go ahead and set that to open after delay of one second. And if you want to fire only once, you can say fire only once. So down here, this is actually activating this fizz box, which I'm going to go over. Um, this enables the motion because it's going to start asleep. And what a fizz box does is it is basically a brush that can be activated 
to have physics enabled so maybe you have a bridge or something that someone's walking over and then all of a sudden that bridge just collapses beneath them when they walk over a certain part so you could have a fizz box for that and that will essentially just enable the motion so that the bridge breaks apart So let's go over the actual Fizzbox now. So Fizzbox has a lot of similar things to the breakable, if you remember that. So you can set the damage filter and all that. You can parent it. Um, prop data, set the strength, which is the health, the material type, like we went over, jib's direction, all this stuff. Um, sold to the world or passes through the world, say if you want if it were like a breaking bridge or a breaking ceiling and you just wanted to pass right through um, you can set that or if you want it to actually land on the ground somewhere you want solid to world um, impact damage if it, if it hits someone or whatever you can set that and then um, what is this health level to override motion yeah uh, you can pretty much read this and play around with it but um, explode magnitude if you want it to deal damage and then obviously explosion damage and radius like we went over then under flags for this particular um, use I want it to start asleep and then once and motion is enabled it will fall down and then I have it on only break on trigger and there's a bunch of other options which pretty much most of the time you won't need to worry about so basically this button on output will enable motion. I probably should have mentioned this while we were going over the sky door, but essentially when you have open and close on the same time, the button will check whatever state the door is in, and based on that it will either open or close it. So if you set both of these then this button becomes essentially able to toggle the door, if that makes sense. So over here we have another option, if you don't want to use a door, you can use a move linear. So let's go ahead and make this a move linear. I'm going to go ahead and name this move. And you can set exact move distance in the correct direction that you want. So move direction, for this case, we want it to move up and act like an elevator. Under flags, you can set it to not solid if you just want it to move, say, like an exploding barrel to the ceiling or something like that. Um, and then you could have like the ceiling break apart with the enable physics. You could set it all up like that with the fizz boxes and everything. But we don't really need to worry about that for this case because we want it to be an elevator. You can set the exact spawn position. Set the speed, if you want to make this a little bit faster, we could probably do 130. And then the distance, you can always use your selector tool to actually check the distance. Um, so we know this is 128, but we already know that because of the height standard that we made everything. Let's make this 128, so very simple. Um, and then if we go over here to our button, it's the same thing I talked about over there. Flags don't move, use activates. On pressed move, which is what we name this, open, and after four seconds it will close, which is plenty of time for you to stand on it. It'll move you up, and once you're off, it'll move back down for the next person. So that is pretty much covering what we need to. Let's talk a little bit about ladders and water and clip now. So for ladders and water, in order for optimization, again, which we'll go over in a separate tutorial, you're going to make all the faces that are not what you want interactable or visible to the player um, to be no draw. And basically it just won't render them at all. Or the faces that is so go ahead and do shift right click to apply a texture to every single face on a brush at the same time 
and type in water. Let's find the water texture. Um, some of them don't work or like have errors that come up. So just be mindful of that. Um, I know that boathouse water um, works completely fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. Let's go ahead and left click to grab that texture off the face of the brush. Shift right click once again and let's use our tool texture which is ladder and just go ahead and apply that to the front face and now when a, a player will be able to interact with this as if it were ladder you would probably want to add like a prop or something that actually indicates that this is a ladder otherwise it is kind of difficult to know that it's there because it's going to be completely invisible um, so over here I have a brush drawn out for our clip area Let's go ahead and move that in and for clip you're just going to go ahead and make all the faces whatever it is so there's standard clip and um, then there's like specifically grenade clip or player clip only um, but generally you just want to use one of these um, whatever material the stair is you can select that so just go ahead and do uh, maybe let's do tile that sounds all right shift right click to get all the faces and now when the player walks up it'll be completely smooth and if someone were to say throw a grenade or shoot the stairs then the grenade would go right through and so would the bullets so that's optimizing your stairs make sure that you do that because it is very annoying walking up bumpy stairs Anyways, let's go on to the teleport. So this is going to be triggers now. Let's go ahead and grab our trigger texture. Shift right click um, to get all the faces once again. And over here, I'm not going to be going into entities in this tutorial, but just so you know, use this tool. Double click to change it, and you're going to want to change it to an info teleport destination. Name it, whatever it is. You want to name it just so you know exactly what it is and there's no flags you have to worry about so I just named this Rick over here we're gonna need to make this a trigger teleport there it is you don't have to name it because it's not tied to anything um, in any sort of hierarchy we do need to set the remote destination to our friend Rick and if you wanted this to start disabled so that say only the button could open it safe to trigger the teleport to teleport you to the e-room and then shut off after you would press the button then you could set that up um, and then obviously you'd want it to start disabled and you want to have that on yes under flags make sure clients is checked because that's what you want most of the time um, you can add whatever you want npcs or whatever if you actually have NPCs, I'm guessing the majority of you probably don't. That's how you set up a teleport. Do note that whatever direction the player is facing as they enter the teleport is the same direction they will be facing once they are teleported with perspective to the center of the world. So yeah, it is physically based in that sense. So over here we have another object that needs to become trigger. Let's go ahead and do that. And this is where you might want a buy zone. So you can do a funk buy zone so that the area becomes a buy zone. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can do funk bomb target if you want this to be the bomb target area. Um, for hide and seek, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, so you might want a trigger multiple to say trigger um, trigger open a door and um, add the health and you know um, I don't know what else you'd need to do but basically yeah trigger on multiple things at the same time or just keep things simple and do trigger proximity and as soon as a player enters the trigger then it will activate whatever you tell it to so for this we want on start touch um, which is right here um, you can set it to 
end touch or start touch all but pretty much most of the time you just want on start touch for this it's kind of weird because you're not actually targeting any entity on an output so what you need to do is activate exclamation point activator which will be it will just activate within this trigger add an output um, obviously you can do all these other things uh, are still available um, in this case we want to add the output and add health of 1000 and then that will trigger pretty much immediately 0.01 seconds after the CT enters this but since it is um, since it is where the CT is spawning, then it will activate immediately. Um, and then maybe you'd want, ideally you'd have um, an entity that at the beginning of the game activates this and then shuts it off because obviously they don't want people walking into it and grabbing a thousand health and then leaving. But for now, just for the purposes of this tutorial once again, um, we're just gonna have it simple as a trigger proximity and fire only once. But most likely you want, most likely you want a trigger multiple, and then you'll have this entity that will go over. I forget the name, but it will trigger all the sort of chat stuff and all the beginning of the game stuff, uh, including that trigger. So over here we have another trigger proximity, like we just went over. We want start disabled. Nope. Um, so I have it set up so that it will enable and disable um, push. So it will enable it and then it will disable it and it's on start touch. So as soon as someone, someone walks in, it will enable it. And then after 3.5 seconds, it will disable push. And what push is, is something that YoHD used on his latest map. And it is literally a trigger push. And what this does is it's kind of like a people mover in a sense. Um, because as soon as you enter the trigger, it will um, push you in a given direction. So for this, we do want start disabled. And flags, we definitely want clients. You can add other things like physics objects to be applied. And then under name, we're going to name this push so that the activator activates it. And then we need to make this trigger. And we also need to do push direction. So by default, and it always goes to the right. So we're gonna make this 270. And then we also get speed of push. With, um, by default, it's 40. So let's go ahead and change this to like two, 220. That's, that's pretty fast, um, I think. <laughs> And so hopefully when you walk through this, it'll push you to the end and push you off and then it will disable it so that it's not bothersome to someone coming up this way or coming through the store or whatever. So it's only when you walk coming up the stairs. So those are just a few things. Um, say if you wanted to activate precipitation as soon as you open the door so that it rains down here, you can do that as well. I've never actually used precipitation, but if you want to do that, I suppose you could. Um, so you just go ahead and make this, oops, control T, funk precipitation, and you can change the color, the density, um, the type. Uh, we got snow ash. That's pretty cool. If you wanted to have it snowing somewhere, you could add that and then it'll look like it is raining or snowing or whatever. As soon as you open this door, you could have it activate. Um, I'm not going to do that just to save time. But let's go ahead and render this for the first time. So I'll make sure you go ahead and do a file save here. Press on these three little rings then go to compile, we're gonna do fast. By default, it will do um, this thing. You wanna go ahead and do expert, cause I don't know, it's just better. Um, I guess you could do fast and normal, but uh, there is this command that you will need to add once we add props. Uh, 
I'll put that in the description of that tutorial, but for now don't worry about it, just put it on fast and for a final compile you're going to want to do full compile, both final and yes it is slow like it says there. So let's go ahead and just click go and it's going to go ahead and do its thing. Oh. So we do need to add skybox. Um, the world needs to be completely closed, um, so there's no access to the void in any way. So for this door, there is a brush behind it preventing the player from seeing the void. Um, do note that once it becomes like one of these entities, that it is no longer a brush capable of shielding you from the void. So we do need to go ahead and make skybox so that you can see out. So again, this is a texture. Scroll down to the very bottom, it's this texture. So we're gonna go ahead and make this skybox, and we're gonna go ahead and make this skybox. And if your or if your map is not completely sealed from the void, then there will it will not be able to compile. And to make things easy, just draw a box around your entire entire level and do tools or right click on it to make it hollow and then texture it with the skybox texture. Um, that is just temporary until we make a proper skybox, which I will show you again in later tutorial. But now we're going to go ahead and click go with our proper skybox in place. It's going to load into the developer version of the game. Let's go ahead and do CT just so you see how much you get. And, um, there we go. As you can see our stairs are clipped. I'm gonna need to do a kick. I don't know why I didn't just do that earlier, but there, I guess there's a bunch of blood. As you can see, um, the world is fully bright, and that's because we haven't added any lights yet. But as soon as we do that, um, you'll be, get more control over how everything's lit, because um, it does look very weird right now. But as you can see, the skybox is working properly. And if we go in this corner, it'll teleport us, and it teleports you in the exact same direction um, that you're looking when you are teleported. You can go ahead and press E on the button, it'll move you, you can walk across, come back in here, this window is bright. Press E on the door, it opens, oh so nice, we got the water in our pond. Um, this ladder is invisible, but it is there. We come here there's our um, fizz box the world uh, is gonna restart I um, kind of forgot that we have a funk brush here which I needed to show you guys and also I wanted to point out that it does in fact play the sound that we set it to and it's pretty much so, this poor man. So, wait for this. Well, let's go back. Press E on that. Our sky door will open. Very nice. Opening up to the other. And as you can see, our fizz box fell to the ground. Um, I don't know. Go ahead and restart that so that we can actually see it fall to the ground. No, wait. Move it, move it. So as you can see in the top left corner it does give you any errors that are occurring. So our door opens and then a fizz box falls. And you can go ahead and maybe we'll put some flowers up there once we add props. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much everything. Uh, the funk push. So when you go up the stairs, it's so nice and smooth. Guys, please remember to clip your stairs. It goes ahead and it pushes you, which is actually pretty cool. It just pushes you. You don't have to press anything. It just pushes you along. Make sure you 
do have clients for teleport and push. But yeah, hopefully this tutorial helped you with all of your functional brush needs. Um, if we go ahead and press this again, should close. Or perhaps not. Maybe there needs to be some debugging that goes on, which is always a good thing to do as soon as you finish a version of your map. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this tutorial. I hope this helped you, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's been nice teaching you, and I'll see you in the next one. So until next time, thanks for watching, and peace.